Hello friends, this is Roman Gill with your weekly Forex market analysis for the week of July 3rd, 2016. We'll start off by taking a look at the economic calendar to see what news is coming out this week. Then we'll move on to the commitment of traders data to understand how the bigger players are positioned. And finally, we'll get into our technical analysis and we'll take a look at the charts to see what levels we are looking to trade at for this week. Looking at the Forex factory calendar here, we start the week off with an important news. In Australia, we had the elections. At the market open on Sunday, today we saw that the Australian dollar dropped. And this was because there was no clear majority government. There are still some votes that need to be counted and uh, liberals are hoping that they will win the majority. However, because there was no clear majority at this point, we have seen Australian dollar drop. And if over the week, as the results come up and all the votes are counted, we still don't see a majority government that will be negative for Australian dollar. And um, the AAA rating that Australia has may get threatened as a result and which could lead to further Australian dollar weakness. So something to keep in mind if we do not see a majority government formed, it may be negative for Australian dollar. Going into Monday here, we have construction PMI uh, for UK here for the British pound. It is a holiday Independence Day for US. And going into the New York session, we have Bank of Canada Business Outlook Survey. And then finally, into the Asian session, we have NYSER Business Confidence Number for New Zealand. And we also have Retail Sales Number for Australian Dollar and the Trade Balance Number. Most importantly here, we have the cash rate and RBA rate statement. At this point, because we are right into the election here, we do not expect to see a rate cut at this point. However, any of the comments in the rate statement will have an impact on the market. Going further into the UK session here, we have services PMI for British Pound. We also have Bank of England Governor Carney speaking. This week is full of central bankers speaking, so we have to be careful. Also, post-Brexit here, things are settling down, and because of that, we may still see increased volatility in the market. And also, since we are into the summer months here, liquidity generally dries up. And combining that with increased volatility, we could see large moves in the market that may be because of less liquid conditions in the market. So we have Bank of England, Governor Carney speaking. And then we have GDT price index coming up for the New Zealand dollar. We also have FOMC member Dudley speaking. With the Brexit scenario playing out at the moment, the market is not expecting the U.S. to raise interest rate this year. However, if we see any negative comments um, in terms of the economy or markets coming out of um, Dudley here, that will be negative for the U.S. dollar and we could see an impact on the U.S. dollar. Going into Wednesday here, we have German factory orders and then we have Reserve Bank of Australia Assistant Governor Jebel speaking. And further into the UK session here, we have ECB President Draghi speaking. This will be very important, and especially if there's anything that suggests further quantitative easing or anything that is negative for the market will create a lot of uh, volatility and could be negative for the euro. We have Canadian trade balance data at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, and then we have FOMC member Troll speaking and final services PMI number and ISM non-manufacturing PMI number for the U.S. We also have FOMC meeting minutes coming out on Wednesday here at 2 p.m. This will be market moving because market will be looking to see what the Fed is thinking at this point now. For Japan here, we have Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda speaking. With Brexit, Japanese yen had gone up a lot and we were hearing a lot of comments coming out of uh, Japan in terms of intervention in the market. So market will be paying very close attention to what Governor Kuroda has to say in order to see if there is concern for intervention. On Thursday, July 7th, we have manufacturing production numbers for British Pound. And then at 7.30 a.m. Eastern, we have ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. This, again, just like FOMC here, this is very important. And then we have ADP non-farm employment number and 
unemployment claims for the U.S. and building permits for Canadian dollar. We also have IVPMI for Canadian dollar here. And as well as the crude oil inventories coming out at 11 a.m. We have Japanese current account, which is the trade balance number for Japan at 7.50 p.m. in the Asian session. Going into Friday here, we have um, German trade balance, French government budget balance, and then very, very important here, we have in the New York session, we have employment change and unemployment numbers for Canadian dollar and non-farm employment change for the U.S. and unemployment rate for the U.S as well as average hourly earnings. Non-farm employment data is very, very important. We um, normally see big moves when we have non-farm payroll data that comes out. Last time it was negative. It was a very, very small number here. This time the market is expecting an increase here. So if this number comes out positive, we should see the US dollar strengthen. However, if it comes out negative, this will be negative for the US dollar. Looking at the euro commitment of traders data here, we see that the leverage money shorts have actually decreased. They have gone from 78,621 to 58,811. So this here is bullish for euro. However, over the long term, this red line here, the asset manager, which are the large pension funds and we're focused on the long term, we see that they have reduced their long positions in the euro. They have gone from 29,896 down to 19,191. So that's a significant drop in their long position here. And this suggests that over the long term, euro may not be very bullish. Looking at British pound, US dollar, commitment of traders data here, we see the green line here, the leverage money positions have gone from 16,479 short to 14,274. So they have decreased their short positions, which suggests that we may see a more of a pullback for British pound here. However, on the other hand, we see the asset managers, which are the long-term players, they have increased their short positions from 77,662 to 80,536. So over the long term, the pension funds and other asset managers are expecting the British pound to go down. Looking at the Canadian dollar data here, we see that the leverage money short positions have gone from 89.16 to 65.50. So they have reduced their short positions. This is bullish for Canadian dollar. And also the asset manager positions, long positions have increased from 34,638 to 38,478. So overall, this is bullish for Canadian dollar, which means for dollar CAD, this is bearish. Looking at Australian commitment of traders data here, we see that the leverage money positions have gone from 58.78 short to 5.084 short. So slight decrease in the short positions for Australian dollar here. However, the asset manager long positions have decreased substantially here. We have gone from 16,622 down to 5,774. So that's a quite a substantial decrease in the long positions from asset managers. This would point to bearish bias for the Australian dollar. Moving on to the charts here, we're looking at Euro US dollar weekly chart. We did see a weekly bullish close here for the euro. And now we are looking to see which direction the euro goes in. At this point, based on the bullish candle, we will look for a follow through. However, we may run into trouble at 1200. Looking at the daily chart here, we have seen euro push up all last week. However, now it seems to have run into resistance and we'll be watching this 1200 level as a place for potential trade setups. If the price stays below 1200 here, we could see the price drop and head back into lower levels here, potentially into 109.70 or even 109.12 here. However, if the price does break above 1200, then we're looking at 1300 as the next level. And if it breaks above that, then we have these previous levels to contend with. However, at this point, the most important number would be the 1200. If it stays below, then we are looking for a move to the downside. 
and heading towards a 109.70 here. Looking at pound US dollar weekly chart, it was a bearish close. However, we did see a long wick in the bottom. At this point, we'll be looking to see if there's a follow through to the downside and if the price manages to break below the bottom here. Looking at the daily chart here, on Friday, it was a very, very small move. Um, and at this point, we are looking for a retest of 13200. If the price stays below 13200, we could see a further move back to test the lows here, 3120 level. However, if the price holds above this 13200 level, we would be looking for price to move back into the top of this range here at 13420. So at this point, we're looking for price to trade between 13200 and 13420. If the price breaks below 13200, then we're looking for a retest of 13119, which is the bottom here, or we are looking for a move to the upside if it holds above. Looking at dollar cat here, weekly candle was a bearish close and we'd be looking for a follow through to the downside. And the level that we're looking at here as target would be 127.68 level, which is right here, the next one. Looking at the daily chart here, we have seen the dollar cat drop over the last few days. And at this point, we're looking for price to continue lower and come into 127.68, which is right over here, this support and resistance. And if it holds below this, then we're looking for a retest of this 26.50 level here, which will, which will be the bottom. However, if the price is not able to hold below the 12900, then we're looking for a retest of 13100, which is the top here. So at this point, we are looking at this as a range and we will look for price to continue to the bottom here, 12768. If it holds above the 12768, we're looking for a push back up. However, if it breaks through 127.68, we are looking for 126.50 as the target. Looking at New Zealand US dollar weekly candle here, we did have a positive close. Um, however, the price seems to be stuck in a bit of a range here between 169.64 and 7200. Looking at the daily close here, as we can see, price has been moving up. However, it is coming into resistance at 7,200. At this point, we're going to trade this as a range. I'm looking to sell at 7,200 if the price stays below 7,200 and we'd be expecting a move to the bottom here, 69.64. However, if the price breaks through the next target would be 7,300 level here. Australian dollar weekly chart also has a positive close. However, Australian dollar will have more volatility because of the elections this week. And at this point, we'll trade this as a range bound market here as well, looking for 75.15 as the top of the range and 72.80 as the bottom of the range. Looking at the daily chart here, we did see bullish closes. However, we have seen the market drop here on the open as a result of the elections here with no clear majority. If we do not see a clear majority in the parliament, we can expect the Australian dollar to drop as a result of that. We may also see a cut in the AAA rating for Australia, which will have a negative impact on Australian dollar. So at this point, we are looking to trade this as a range. If the price stays below 75.15 here, we're looking to sell. And if the price holds above 72.80 here, we'll be looking to buy. So just trading this range for the moment. That's it for now. If you would like to learn some profitable forex trading strategies, I invite you to visit my website tradingwithvenus.com forward slash forex course. In this course, I take you through all the different strategies that I use to trade, as well as complete understanding of the technical analysis and fundamental analysis as well. That's it for now. I will see you next week.